And welcome back. Student Debt Crisis is a not-for-profit organization dedicated to fundamentally reforming student debt and higher education loan policies. Student Debt Crisis takes a personal approach to member needs by working directly with borrowers to understand their challenges, their fears, as well as their repayment obstacles and frustrations. Student Debt Crisis tackles the challenges of loan refinancing and also consumer protection policies with media and legislators, as well as educating borrowers and higher education experts with lectures, webinars, as well as special events. Now with the coronavirus pandemic affecting families across the country, including student loan borrowers, what assistance and relief should be provided? Well, here now to tell us more is the Program Director of Student Debt Crisis, and we're pleased to have Cody Hunanian join us. And uh, Cody, good to have you. Thanks for having me, Darren. This topic is so important to so many families across the country, and obviously this is a crisis now with COVID-19, so I'm happy to be here to talk about this issue. Yeah, let's go right at it. I mean, when we talk about student debt crisis, obviously it affects American families in a major uh, kind of way. Talk to us a little bit about what you've learned about how the pandemic has actually affected families. Yeah, so great question. You know, obviously student loan debt was a crisis prior to this pandemic this year. You know, we've been calling, uh, we believe it is a crisis for families. We believe it's an economic crisis for the entire country. But now with the health and financial obstacles that have been created by COVID-19, we are facing two crises compounding one another. Uh, and so student debt crisis have been working with student loan borrowers since March uh, to really address the financial obstacles that they're facing. And what we've found is not only are borrowers, you know, obviously strapped when it comes to putting food on their table, many of them have reduced working hours, some of them even have additional healthcare costs. Uh, but we also found that the government's attempts to provide special relief for student loan borrowers hasn't made it to the communities that need this help the most. So student debt crisis uh, immediately started researching the impact of COVID-19 on student loan borrowers. And we pulled about 40,000 student loan borrowers. And we found that Black and Latinx borrowers uh, at a much higher rate were unaware of the federal relief provided to student loan borrowers. Uh, so there is an information gap that is happening right when people need to know about this health the most. Yeah, and I want to talk about that because there's some reform that's been proposed uh, in terms of dealing with the debt crisis. But let's talk about that, that, that information right there that's so key, that's so critical, that many people don't even know about, and that's the assistance that's available to them. Yeah, uh, you know, thankfully, the federal relief for student loan borrowers was enacted automatically. So if you have the proper federal student loan, you have had your payments and interest suspended uh, for over six months. And that is huge for people who are facing the financial burden that's been caused by this health crisis. Uh, what is really problematic though, is so many people are unaware that these policies were created and it's creating mass amounts of confusion. Now, if you've been working in this space as long as I have, you know that the student loan system is already complex and confusing enough. And now with rapidly changing policies that were well-intentioned, we are seeing the consequences of people being unaware of policy changes. So we are really dreading uh, January 1st when federal student loan repayments are meant to start again because we expect millions of people to be unaware of how these policies work. They're gonna miss payments. They may fall into loan default, which has a huge financial consequence uh, for families. So we are really doing our best to let people know what relief was enacted, when it ends, and what your responsibilities will be at the end of this. And well, let's talk about responsibilities because people want to have, people want to pay their debts. I mean, honestly, they want to pay their debts, but there's this challenge. We know also 22 uh, million Americans filed for the first time for unemployment. That's a huge number. So you got people who are dealing with unemployment, and many of those people who are dealing with unemployment are also going to be connected uh, to student loan. So talk to us about how people are going to be able to navigate this given the fact that possibly I don't have a job and now I also have this debt that's right in front of me. Yeah, I, you know, first I have to put an underline on what you said, Darren. You are absolutely right. Student loan borrowers, they want to pay back their debts. These are not people that are asking for, quote, a handout. These are responsible, you know, some of the most responsible and educated people in our communities. That's exactly why they have student loan debt. And they want to be responsible about this process. 
The problem is the student loan system has been broken. And while we have this special relief that was enacted by Congress and extended by the president uh, related to COVID-19, it isn't going to be enough. And so student debt crisis has really vamped up, uh, revamped our efforts and our call to pass broad-based student debt cancellation for millions of Americans. Now, if you think about it, big businesses, uh, airline companies, uh, they received huge support from our government to make sure that they don't go out of business. We need to make sure families aren't going bankrupt either. And the way to do that is to eliminate this debt burden forever, not just temporary relief. And so since March, we started a petition that got over 1.3 million signatures from Americans across the country who are calling on Congress to pass student debt cancellation, not only to lift the burden for individuals, not only to lift the burden off of families all across the country, but to boost the economy. Because we also know that part of this uh, recovery isn't just a health recovery. The COVID-19 pandemic is gonna require an economic recovery. And debt cancellation can boost GDP, it can increase uh, jobs, uh, it will help the entire economy as a whole. And so it's got many uh, benefits, and we know millions of people support this type of proposal as well. Yeah, I was talking to several people in Washington, D.C., and they pretty much shared with us that they are in favor, and these are legislators, are in favor of total student debt cancellation. How realistic do you think that is in happening? Well, you know, I was an author of a piece at the beginning of this pandemic called Now is the Time to Cancel Student Debt. And I think that is absolutely spot on. Uh, you know, we already saw the folks um, in DC, including Bernie Sanders, Senator Elizabeth Warren, and others call for broad-based student debt cancellation. But now with the economic impact of COVID-19, we see people on both sides of the aisle really getting behind this topic. In fact, a recent poll showed bipartisan support. Over 56% of people on both sides of the aisle support some form of debt cancellation. So I think we are closer than ever. Uh, but I do want to note too, canceling student debt doesn't necessarily mean that we have to erase every single penny of debt for every single person. There is a lot of research out there that allies of ours have performed that shows even as little as five to $10,000 in student debt cancellation would help support the people who are in the most burdensome financial situations. This helps the people that need it most. Uh, so we support all sorts of ideas when it comes to debt cancellation. We just know we need long-term relief from this crisis. Do you view the student debt situation as a form of economic injustice? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, first of all, it's a, it's a moral failing of our society that we've crushed millions of people with debt because of their choice uh, to become educated. But what's even more concerning is we have found the student debt crisis skyrocketing just when Black, Latinx, and other uh, minority groups were just starting to access higher education in a way that was going to be supportive uh, for long-term improvement. So, you know, we see that Black women have more student loan debt than anyone uh, in America. That's a civil rights issue. These are the types of uh, intersectionalities that more people need to talk about because this isn't just a financial topic. This is a civil rights problem. This is a societal issue, uh, and we treat it as such. Yeah, I've always said that, you know, if you owe a whole lot of money, of course, you can't go back to school. Uh, sometimes it also deals with you in terms of how you're able to function in your in, in your workplace. You're trying to find all these bills that you have to pay. And that student let that student loan is a heavy burden, especially if you've got secondary education, post-secondary education. These things begin to add up. And I remember uh, having President Obama, as a matter of fact, uh, visit the city one time, that in the process of him visiting the city, as the president of the United States, he said, I just got finished paying off my student loan debt uh, in, 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 in all, while he was still in office. It's amazing. The president of the United States even paid off his student loan debt, but it took him until he became the president to pay it off. Yeah, you know, that's a great example as well. Uh, because, you know, obviously Brock and Michelle Obama, they were still paying their student loan debt. But you have to remember, they were also parents with children who were about to go to college themselves. That is the situation of many people across the country. They are now paying their own student loans well into their 30s and 40s. And then they have to think about how they're going to invest in their children's future as well. Because we have to remember we have a system right now where it's so costly to go to college that the system 
uh, expects you to have parents who can help support the investment. Uh, you know, that's a whole nother problem. Uh, but we know that this problem is a, a burden for families. You also started to go there as well. We have people in this country who want to do some of the most important jobs in our country that are often underpaid. Those are social workers. Those are healthcare professionals. Those are people who work uh, with ch uh, children in school settings and their income isn't commiserate with how expensive it is to access this high level education. And our student loan system is failing them. People are having to make career choices, they're having to make family choices, and they're having to make personal choices based not on what's best for them and their community, but what's best for their student debt situation. Uh, and that's just a, a moral failing for our country. And I, I think that's one of the reasons we need to fix this immediately. Yeah, before we get out, Cody, I need to get you the opportunity to share with our viewers, how can they get in touch with you? How can they find out more information if they're a student out there to say, listen, I really need to be locked into this because this is going to help me uh, possibly navigate uh, where, I'm, where I'm trying to go. How do they go about doing that? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, I would visit our website. It's studentdebtcrisis.org. And if you join us there, you can both be a part of the grassroots movement to end this crisis. And you can also tap into all of our free educational resources. So not only are we fighting for reforms, we are doing free clinics, we're providing free resources. We wanna make sure people aren't burdened with this debt. And by doing so, then they're mobilized and ready to go to create change. So visit us there and become this part of this million person movement. As we said, a lot of people are dealing with this, and hopefully uh, you've been able to provide some insight into how somebody can navigate and possibly overcome. Cody, Hunanian, thanks much. Of course. All righty. Well, listen, I want you to stay with us, but listen, we've got uh, more, we got more show, but also if you want more information about Cody and the organization, we encourage you visit their website, studentdebtcrisis.org, and then also follow them on their social media platforms at, stu, stu, I should say, at debtcrisis.org. Uh, All right, well, we're taking a quick break. We've got more show. Stay with us. We're coming right back right after this.